Okay, so I'm going to go over the gram-negative cocci. First, how they look like. They're gram-negative. Negative is red on a microscope right here. You see these red dots? This is gram-negative. The cocci means round, so you have round red dots, gram-negative cocci. The good news is there's only one species that you really need to worry about, or two, one genus that you really need to worry about, and that's Neisseria. So if you see something that looks like this, you should immediately think Neisseria. Now the species have exactly what they cause in their name. Neisseria meningitidis causes meningitis. Neisseria gonorrhea causes gonorrhea. So it's very easy. One genus, Neisseria, two species, meningitidis, gonorrhea, two diseases. So first, Neisseria meningitis causes meningitis. Remember, 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 if it causes meningitis, it has a capsule. Meningitis should always be associated with a capsule. Similar to Neisseria gonorrhea, the Neisseria genus needs to be cultured on chocolate auger. This is lysed red blood cells. Chocolate auger is lysed red blood cells. Both Neisserias are oxidase positive. This is a very important distinguishing step. Now, Neisseria meningitis itself resides in the nasopharynx and it's asymptomatic. You do not get pharyngitis from Neisseria meningitis, but eventually it can enter the blood and since it has a capsule, it's protected from the immune system and reach the blood brain barrier. It crosses and can cause meningococcemia. The carrier rate of people that have it in their nasopharynx is much higher, around 30% in closed quarters which include military or college dorms. This means that these military or college dorms have a much higher rate of Neisseria meningitis. This is the most common cause of meningitis between ages 2 and 18 years old. You can imagine why, because people are in schools, close quarters, they can transfer to each other much more easily. Now, very severe meningitis caused by this organism is called waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome. waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome is caused by Neisseria meningitidis, and it's the very severe meningococcemia. This means that it's causing meningitis and it's in the blood. This is meningitis and it includes failure of the adrenal glands accompanied with hemorrhage. You can see, or you can test for this by ACTH. ACTH test is supposed to stimulate the adrenals to release um, uh, aldosterone, and things we'll go over in the next page. But when the adrenals do not respond to ACTH, this means that they're currently in failure, which is associated with Waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome. The diagnosis is usually a gram stain. Once again, if you see the gram negative, the red cocci, you should think Neisseria. This is an important point to see right here. Neisseria meningitis ferments maltose, gonorrhea does not. If you ever need to distinguish between these two, there you go. Treatment is penicillin G and prophylaxis if there's a breakout in a college dorm in the military, you're not sure if you've been contaminated, or Fampin is prophylaxis that you're going to use. There's also a vaccine that contains the uh, polysaccharide groups in the capsule of A, C, Y, and W. A, C, Y, and W. A review of the adrenal glands. This is because the Friedrichsen syndrome, the adrenal glands, the medulla, produces adrenaline and noradrenaline and the cortex produces cortisol, your sex hormones, and aldosterone. That's just a quick review. Neisseria gonorrhea. Neisseria gonorrhea obviously causes gonorrhea. It's symptomatic in men, and someone presents with painful urination and pus, uh, pus discharge from their penis. You can think of Neisseria gonorrhea or chlamydia, and it's generally asymptomatic in women, although it can develop into pelvic inflammatory disease. Uh, this is an important note. This is this is what makes it very unique. Is it's gram negative, but does not have LPS. Instead, it has LPO, which is lipooligosaccharide. Although it contains lipid A, which is the part that causes sepsis, that causes the toxic effects in the body, it's it's less toxic. It's more mild. So that's an important point to remember about Neisseria gonorrhea. It has LPO. It does not have LPS. Urinary tract infections and STD should be associated with flagella or pili. This is because when you urinate, the stream usually pushes down the bacteria, but the pili help bacteria attach, and if it helps them attach, they can cause UTIs. Gonorrhea causes UTIs and uh, STD, therefore it most likely has a pili, and that is its virulence factor. It can, I don't know why I said organisms, it can spread to other organs especially in immunocompromised people. 
And neonates can get an infection in their conjunctiva if their mother was pregnant. When the baby passes through the canal, it can pick up the Neisseria gonorrhea and have conjunctiv uh, conjunctivitis. In many cases, Neisseria con gonorrhea co-infects with chlamydia. This is why when someone has Neisseria gonorrhea, you treat them for the gonorrhea, but you must also treat them with chlamydia. It's a co-treatment. Neisseria gonorrhea and chlamydia are treated together, which you see right here. The treatment for gonorrhea is a third generation cephalosporin. The treatment for chlamydia is tetracycline. How do you diagnose? Well, you can do a gram stain or a culture. You can do a gram stain and uh, you will see red diplococci as we saw in the opening inside PMNs. And I will show you a picture of this. You must culture the organism on chocolate auger. Specifically, it's called the Thayer Martin medium. This is also called VPN medium because it contains three antibiotics. Why the board requires you to know this, I have absolutely no idea, but it's something that is fair game apparently. And these are the three antibiotics that you must culture Neisseria on. Val vancomycin, polymyxin, and nystatin. This prevents growth of other organisms and selects for the growth of Neisseria. Once again, chocolate auger, VPN. It does not ferment maltose. Remember, Neisseria gonorrhea does not ferment maltose. Neisseria meningitidis does. That's how you distinguish between the two. Right here, this is a pretty god-awful picture, but as you can see, it's a polymorphonucleus right there, the white blood cell. And here inside the white blood cell, you can see some diplococci that are red. This is Neisseria gonorrhea. I know I said there's one genus. There is another one, which is called Moraxella. Moraxella can cause otitis media and sinusitis in children. This is relatively low yield, but if for some reason you get a case of a child with otitis media and the culture shows a gram-negative cocci, well, then it happens to be Moraxella. The reason I put this in there is because I got a question like this. So, and you treat with Bactrim. All right, that's it for the gram-negative cocci.